there. Hey, all right. All right, go ahead, Christopher. Oh, nobody calls me. So I'm Crab, um, the the guy who apparently has become the 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 principal in the general chat channel. So the, the only one with the the only one with the Zoom account. Yeah, I'm the one who who I guess is supposed to be the disciplinarian there. And so when you fuck up in that, you come to my office for whatever reason, not sure how that involved. Um, I mean, you're the teacher too, aren't you? No, I just used to work at a high school. So yeah, we'll that would be, that'd be Pablo and Ipaso Bon. They're the teachers. Um, uh, let's see, I'm in Chicago. Um, I've been in about a while since 2013. Um, for various reasons, I had to walk away from my, my ELA. So I'm kind of out here just kind of on my own, doing my own thing with the few godchildren that I have. I'm just kind of you know, trying to put one foot in front of the other. Curtis? Okay. And it's, I don't know who's in, what, what the order is for everyone. So I'm a concolero on everything, basically. Uh, Curtis in real life, Baba Yobe. Um, yeah. So I give people the ban when they uh, act up. When they can't handle crab disciplining them uh i'm in easter east central florida so i was selling crab i see the rockets when they go up from my backyard so that's pretty cool cooler than watching them go up is when you see them come back down when spacex does a heavy launch the two boosters come back down and that is pretty ridiculous um but yeah there's nothing going on here for the religion you got to go to orlando or tampa and i haven't done that yet so i'm pretty much all by myself all right, lots of turn. All right, Joe. <clears throat> Let me see, I can't even see myself in here. All right, uh, what's going on, everybody? Uh, my name is David, aka Lots of Sequel in the Discord. And y'all don't get to know my Reddit name because those secrets are for me. Um, what do you call it? Uh, been Crown Jungle 10 years, going on 11. Uh, I'm also a palero, I'm a tata. I've been up a little longer than I've been in Ocha. I'm in Chicago. Got my god siblings out here. No he hollows yet. Um, estranged from my first godfather. Uh, my second godfather and I having some communication issues currently. But other than that, here I am. So I guess Carlos would be the next. Okay. Carlos was saying he's going home, so maybe he's not oh, at the right, phone so. right now. Is there anyone who's joined in the last two minutes that's a priest? Carlos says he's muted. Yeah, but you can unmute yourself, dude. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe just, once you mute yourself again, you can't unmute yourself. I don't know. Yeah, it just allowed me to unmute. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, I've been scratched for 11 and a half years. Uh, only had Santo problems for the last year and a half. Yeah. Uh, I'm out of uh, Miami. So not as knowledgeable as the rest in here. Anyone else? Oh, so if you mute yourself, you have to wait for us to allow you to unmute yourself again. So try not to mute yourself. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, I didn't know. We're getting used to this. Yeah, and the reason, so the the, the reason why is because when we first did this, it, there were only like four or five people, so it didn't really matter. But one of the people was jumping in and interrupting a lot. So that's why I wanted to make sure that only priests were unmuted. Um, and now that we have 14 people, it's kind of important. Um, but there'll definitely be a chance. And the chat, we're reading the chat. So if anything does come up, um, put it in the chat. All right, what's on what's on the agenda, Crab? All right, so um, we're going to talk about virtual readings because those seem to be a, a, a point of contention and controversy. And then we wanted to talk about taboos in context and then even readings in context. I think it's important to kind of um, 
put, you know, if you go on the Avenue Soul Day, put that in the context of like time and, and the expectations. Um, if you get, uh, you know, your mono and you receive that sign, what's, what's the context, you know, over what time period, what are we talking about? You know, how quickly do you have to do the things that are in it? Just to, to kind of give uh, everybody maybe a better sense of, of the, uh, the lack of urgency on some things and maybe that some things have an urgency that they might not consider having an urgency. So you're the one that's all about the virtual readings. That's that you're, you're always the one that's pro that. So you want to start off with that well, before, well, before I get to the pros, what, what's your, your view on virtual readings, Brad? My view on virtual readings is I don't see a problem with them. I, I, I share your view in that uh, any reading is better than no reading. Mm -hmm. you know, what about, so what about you sequel? I'm the same way. My godfather always taught me that, you know, it, especially, you know, in cases of emergency and things like that, or if you're not near someone that can attend to you, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to sit there stuck with no options. <clears throat> it, yeah. It's a matter of the person knowing what they're doing when they're doing the reading for you. That's most important uh, is the way I was always taught. So to me, virtual readings are definitely legit. Uh, it's just like with anything else. Don't go to someone you're unsure of right 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 yeah uh a charlatan diviner is going to be a charlatan whether they're in person or not carlos do no. you have an opinion if you're there if you're able to unmute he unmuted so all right if people read the and ray well Ray probably can't hear us quite yet because he just got in. So we don't know who Ray is. He might be a priest. Um, if you read the Reddit and you pay it, I do not know people's names. So when people mention people on Reddit, I mean, unless it's one of the four or five regulars in Discord that I know their Reddit names, I have no idea who people are and I don't keep them straight, especially when they keep their original Reddit name, which is usually some weird adjective followed by a weird noun, right? Um but, you know, there's one person I know in real life that's in Chicago and we often butt heads. So um, he he's always saying whenever anyone has a question, he says, get a reading. But but then he's also says that virtual readings are whack. So like what? Well, what do they do then if they do not if they live in Alaska? What are they going to do? Um, so so uh, backing up then. His comment was, well the person's not manipulating the Ebo. Okay. Well, Ifa is logic, right? If, if it's one thing, it's logical. So, okay. So manipulating the Ebo, that, that's your head deciding which thing goes where, which ultimately decides yes or no. All right. When you read yourself, do you touch the Ebo? No, you don't touch the Ebo. You throw, even if it's shells, it doesn't matter. You throw two signs if the first sign's big, uh, you know, senior, it's yes. If the second sign senior, it's no. You're not manipulating Evo. So then, how does that work? If your your head needs to manipulate the Evo for it to be legit, then how can you read yourself? Well, you're actually manipulating the equile or the shells. Yeah, but it's a Urumila that's speaking through the equile, right? I'm not the one deciding what falls in the equile. I don't care, you know. Even doing Ekin, you know, you can only you can only try to. Uh, manipulate so much to go get a sign you one and and even then you're probably going to screw it up anyway um which by the way is the reason the youngest awo does the letter of the year because they're the one least likely to manipulate it because they they have the least experience with it but that's a, a side note so using logic what is it about a virtual reading that that is that makes it anathema so i i don't know what the the answer is and when i tried to engage them you know you can't get anywhere with 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 that sort of thinking so honestly what what would it be i don't know honestly i feel like it's also in part you know a lot of a lot of the people that seem to be very against it uh also seem to have in common that they deal with other kinds of spiritualities and the reason i mention that is because i feel like there's also this idea that hey 
I can't read your energy properly unless I have you here in front of me. All right. Mm-hmm. But that's where I feel like people that mixing is contradicting things because I feel like so it in your case, like you're talking about the Equele, right? Or uh the Ophelia or Ikin or whatnot. Uh that's Urunmila talking through those uh, devices while you're doing the divination, right? So it's the same concept in this regard, but people are trying to, in my opinion, are trying to mix up other beliefs into it instead of thinking, okay, like, we're just going to let that talk or we're going to let the Dilogun talk. You know, let the Orishas talk through their device. You know, as opposed to, let me see, que dice el espíritu, déjame ver lo que dice el... You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, with some of the other esoteric traditions, the being able to read an energy, which we don't do. We do not read energies. Um, but yeah, I, guess, I can see what you're saying, that that kind of transfers over. Um, and that's not to say it's a bad thing for the people that do it. I just think that the mentality makes them think that hey you know this isn't going to be valid unless i can do this you know in person right, or right, yeah. i can do this in front of you you know and i i don't see why either option is wrong you know whether virtual or in person i always my, my father you know always used to say the same thing that in person is always going to be better oh yeah but, but if somebody in miami asked me to read them virtually i'm going to say no <laughs> because there's plenty of people in miami to read them. yeah yeah so I kind of I mean, I agree 100% with what with what Sequel has said about that. Is that I, it, it it seems to be the 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 pushback is coming from the I guess that arm of the the religion that is not 100% Lukumi, and you know they're 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 stuck on or obsessed with their or I don't know feel like other new age stuff belongs in this religion. And if we don't have that present, then there's no way we're doing something right. And they can't see that their, their, their initial premise is what is incorrect. What you say needs to be a part of this. He's never been a part of this. So those rules don't apply. So if that's the case, then your objection to virtual readings goes out the window. I think that that's, that that's a big part of it. Um, you know, I think the other piece of that is that, you know, there's, there's people who are very staunch and said in the way that this is how my Ile did it. And this is how it's always done. And you can't do things that way. And they're, they're not, I guess, allowing the religion to, to evolve and adapt in the way that it always has as the, the, the years, the century, the technology and everything like that goes on. I mean, if we were to, to follow that, then neither Curtis or I would ever become Bangalaos because, hey, white people don't <laughs> practice religion and we're not going to let you in. You know, we you know, it would be like Philip Niemark where you're initiated only so far and then you're fed a bunch of bullshit. So just to keep you happy and, and, and move you right along. So the so other I, thing that's working against virtual readings is it's a lot easier to book an entire day for yourself doing virtual readings and make a lot of money off people. Um, And I think that kind of rubs off on a lot of people and gives them a bad impression. But again, talking logically, we can set that aside, assume an authentic, uh, good intention diviner um, and not someone that's going to charge a hundred dollars for a, no, sorry, $150 for an email summary of your reading. And then also want to charge you a hundred dollars when you have a follow-up question to it which we do have somebody in the discord that had a reading with a certain well-known Baba Lau. And that is what happened. They paid the, is that the hundred. Is, I'm sorry, is that the same one that also created a new religious ceremony? Yeah. basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so okay. they paid okay. for the ceremony. They paid for the Asode. They paid to get read. They got just like, an email not even like a page i heard i don't know so that part i don't know but then i said they had a question and they came to me with a question i said listen i can't comment was it ita if it's ita i'll talk to you if it was an osode we don't talk about other people's osodes um and she said no it was an osode i said just ask my question it was email but email them back and say you got a question they told me the, the they responded and said it's a hundred dollars for an hour-long coaching session on what your consult so 
that gives a very bad name to Bob allows in general, but also virtual readings. So, oh, so then, all right, another thing, uh, as far as if virtual readings are, are authentic or whatever you want to say, I mean, the number one question is, do they work? Are they effective? And that would have to be something that the people that get read would, would reply to. But from my experience and the feedback I've gotten, they very much are effective. I mean, I can attest to that personally is I've had to have, you know, my, my padrino is in California. So the only way he and I interact is virtually, you know, phone call, Zoom, email. And I needed his input on, on an issue. Um, so I did a reading with him and yeah, everything rolled out and what came in the, in, in the reading um, was pretty much true to the situation. You know, now the advantage, of course, for me is that once I had everything, you know, I knew that to see all that, I, of course, can pull, you know, do and, and keep looking at it. But right, right. just based off what he said and the, the, the consejo given, you know, I was able to navigate that situation to the best possible outcome for me. You know, it, so I don't, you know, I don't and probably navigate it better than if I just stuck to, to myself reading it and, and, and going no, off of what Lula was telling me. So, yeah, I, I've had personal experience with these and I've found them to be effective. Again, I would prefer to be sitting in front of my father, you know, because mm -hmm. it would give me an opportunity for that, that back and forth that can, that can add a little something to those readings, maybe give some clarity on, on some things or an aha moment that you, you won't get otherwise. But I was able to resolve my issue. Now, what's missing from the conversation, obviously, is a priest that disagrees um, so that we don't just have an echo chamber here. So, I mean, I really would like to talk with one uh, logically and, and see at what point the logic breaks down. Um, for humans. But yeah, I mean, if any of this did not work significantly above random probability, none of us would be doing it right we wouldn't be throwing money after all this stuff if if it wasn't effective beyond flipping a coin well before i was uh before i was ever crowned even like at the beginning of like me dipping my toes into the religion uh, I, I i was just as skeptic as anyone else right you know and one thing that i always told myself especially after a reading that would always kind of blow my mind is you sit there and you think about it. Like if there's 16 shells, 256 different opportunities, mathematically speaking, the odds of what comes out for you being able to specifically pertain to you, you know what I mean? Like as much as like, these, a good reading does, like the, the odds are astronomical, right? So to me, that's where it's like even the skeptic in me's got to be like, all right, maybe it's more than just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. you know? For me, I, I'm a skeptic. Because everyone's got their well, own individualized so, yeah. experience with it, but like that's something that I've always loved about getting a good reading. Like, call me on my bullshit. You know what I mean? Tell me, <laughs> tell me where I'm messing up. Tell me where I'm doing good. Tell me what I got to do to fix it. Like it is what it is. It's off-putting for some people, and some people embrace it, and it's like my padrino always said, like, man, try me los ojos para que me lo pueda arreglar todo. You know. Like, if I know what the problem is, I know how to fix it. So. Yep. Well, I think we covered that. Other than getting a, a, a contradicting opinion, which won't happen tonight, but hopefully somebody will chirp up at some point. Well, here. So, like, all right. Devil's advocate, right? Why sure. couldn't it? Why would it be an issue doing something from a distance, right? What what supports the notion if there's I'm not well versed in Odu, I'm gonna just very straightforward do it. So I'll just ask the questions. Mm, let's see if we learn some shit tonight. So what what would support being able to uh do divination for someone without them being present? For example, right? Yes, yeah, I mean I, I am not aware of any story where it was done um by distance but again those stories are at the least 200 years old and probably much older and the ability to do it by distance is rather new maybe 100 years right 
So I don't know if that's enough reason to say Odu does not support it. I mean, Ogun, after all, is is the Orisha of technology and being able to communicate the way we are tonight. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Well, I think that just because Odu, there isn't an Odu that, that points to it that says, hey, you know, Arula used to do consultas by carrier pigeon or some crap like that, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't mean that it's not a legit or 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 shouldn't even or, or should not be considered you know an, an accepted possibility you know my other thing on this is that i think that there's some there there's a certain amount of we want to keep this stuff secret and controlled you know there's still that that mindset that is kind of running in the background of a lot of this and i wouldn't be surprised to find it there and the more that we engage on the internet and do these things, well, now, now we're spreading it around and we're opening the door for charlatans, certainly. Um, we're opening the door to, to change. And this isn't a religion that's embraced significant change easily or quickly. It, unless it's something critical, like, hey, you know, we don't have... Um, you know, we don't have Hutia in, in, in Cuba, <laughs> so we're going to have to find something to, to substitute in for that. You have to. That's a necessity for, for, for honoring a, a Leguar, you know, something along those lines. Um, we don't have, you know, we have the Siba tree here. We don't have the, the Oropo tree. So we got to use that. That becomes the stand in. Those, those sorts of things are where the religious embraced change very mm -hmm. quickly when it's a matter of survival. But in terms of, of evolution and growing, it's very slow to, to I think, take on change, especially change that might bring it kind of more and more into the mainstream. So what you said reminded me of two things. Number one, let me see if I can remember. Okay, so the first thing is, even if there was a story where Orumila read somebody by carrier pigeon, then somebody could also say, but you're not doing it by carrier pigeon, you're doing it by text message right i mean there's there would always be that moving the goalpost thing where they well, could sure yeah uh the second thing so there in the story the people go to orumila orumila does not go to the people so um i hate when i see baba Lows anywhere on reddit on instagram saying hey i'm i'm available for readings hey drop in for readings and all this crap you know what on my stuff, it says I'm a bubble out. That's all I need to say. You want a reading? You email, you know, message me. I'm not going to, you know, make a website where you can sign up for readings and this stuff and all that. Um, <laughs> <Franklin. laughs> um, yeah. So, so, so somebody messaged me on Reddit. They said, uh, I think I might have already been talking to anyone. They, they, they were looking for a reading. Somebody, they said, somebody DM me. I said, ignore it. If they DM you, ignore it. If you DM them, fine. But that's kind of along the same lines as what we're talking about with with how easily it's become to to rip people off from their money. Um, so if anyone ever slides into your DM saying that you need a reading, then just block them. Um, and if you're talking to somebody anywhere about a reading and they and they don't say, hey, would you like one? That's because they're not supposed to. Right. You can't be timid. If you want a reading with somebody, say, listen, can I get a reading? Because they're not going to offer it. That's not what we do. You know, you come to us. Anyways, that's, that's a tangent. No, but you're absolutely you're absolutely right. It's the same thing. Like, I don't I don't do readings on the Osho side. I don't know how to do Dilo Goom, but I, I do readings on Impalo. And even in Palo, it's the same thing. Like, we're not gonna go up to someone and be like, Oh yeah, these are my you know what I mean? Like right, I'm right. gonna do blah 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 blah. Like, no, like if I tell you I'm a palero, that's it. Right, <laughs> right. You can ask at that point and that's it. I'm not gonna you know, I, it's not honest to chase anybody down. I think it's also the secret of nature of everything, too, just traditionally speaking on all sides. But what I was going to say, too, that you reminded me, I would I would argue, right, and I've said this, you know, for years at this point, but I would say that any Fataki, right, that talks about Elegua delivering a message would justify any kind of at-distance reading, right? Because if at the end of the day it's just a transfer of messages that we're being yeah. given, then it stands to reason he travels long distances to give these messages anyways in these stories, right? Whether it's the people, to Orisha, combination of both. 
So to me, it stands to reason it. He's the one that rules divination ultimately, right? Or delivers all the messages. Then that's the justification right there. And, it makes and we sense. also that's the way we also have a... kind of... go ahead. Sorry, I thought you were done. No, I was just saying that's the way I was always kind of explained it by my padrino too. You know what I mean? So I'm just it's always made sense. It's always so. I don't know if that's a point of view taken into consideration before, but. And as far as adapting, we've got a story where Orumila is wrongfully imprisoned and does a bow with the the scrapings from the wall, the terracotta clay wall or whatever, because he didn't have Iefa, so he had to use that. He had to use the food that he was served, right? And he did a bow with that. Well, is that as good as doing it with the correct ingredients on the correct tablero? No, but that's all he had. And the ants came and took his the food from the Ebo, and Eligua saw the ants and said, something's going on here, followed him back to the cell where Orumila was and, and helped him escape. Um, by the way, he escaped by hiding in the trash can, which I think they do in Chicago when they want to get out of jail. But, yes, that's, that, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what we yeah. um, so, so, I mean, right there is a, a story that's showing you that an adaptation sometimes is required depending on the situation. So if you live in Anchorage, Alaska, and you need a reading, I would think that story would apply just as well as one where Odumila reads somebody via telephone. So I have a, a, a contributing opinion about the the uh, long distance reading. Um, I'm going to let my wife, who is a petit take over because it's her opinion. Okay. She's hey, allowed. Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. I, so I'm not very like studious on like the patakis or anything like that. My, I guess what you can call my ache comes from just who I am. But, I mean, I understand and I agree with the fact that you're saying, you know, if you're somewhere and you don't have a chance to, you know, you need reading and I get all that. Me, personally, I feel like, because we had, um, we did a reading and I had to sit in for the person. And I feel like when you're sitting in front of the Baal to get a reading, it's your, actually, your, like, force that's in there. And it can model things. That, that's just me. That's my opinion. I'm kind of a little bit more like the old tradition, you know, the internet and stuff is great. And it's a great way to, you know, for everybody here to communicate. But personally, I feel that that sometimes can model what comes out um, long distance. I don't, I don't know. I, I personally think for myself that being present there with my hands on the stones and stuff is more, I guess, effective or more clear. I, I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but I totally get what you're saying about if you're like in Alaska and you have nothing else. I mean, that's the option. So let me ask this: ask you this: Is it that you're 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 there to manipulate the the the, the Evo, or is it that you are there actively participating in the reading, even if you didn't use the Evo, you had the uh, the the opportunity to 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 be there as the the signs came down to see how the the conversation evolved. Yeah, so that everything also So it's more it's more participation. Participation so, and just like the holding of the So um, if, if if the person was able to participate sans evil over mm -hmm. the phone in an internet in interactive manner, would that be enough to satisfy your your hesitation? No, to be quite honest, no. Okay. All right. But so, if it would resort like I needed a reading and I have to get you know I have to get some clarification about X Y and Z and I don't have any other way then I guess that would be but for me I think I would get more out of just sitting in front of the Baba Lao like I feel more connection to like Rula like what's being you know that energy that's going between the Baba Lao and the person that's getting the reading is so not that I did I mean I'm kind of disagreeing but yeah so um when, when I do distance readings, I don't have a stand-in. Um, I just do direct. Now, when I did one for my my Siwa, um, he had somebody there doing that. And this represents their head, right? But there wasn't any Evo. But I, you know, I don't do it. I don't have any of my family members stand in. But kind of for the same reason, probably. I don't want to involve them in the whatever energy might be there. So that's kind of probably... We probably have similar reasons for for it, but yeah, I don't know if it's true or not. But yeah, I I don't want to get anyone else involved either. Hey, 
Can you, because I don't have the controls here, so can you unmute Carlos Mafran? He muted himself again by accident. Does he want to get unmuted? <laughs> So I, I share the sentiment of the up at the day. My my biggest issue with virtual readings would be who you're receiving it from, the credibility, the years, because virtually anything can be manipulated to the sense depending on who is giving that reading, whether it's uh, an epiditita reading or a, a, any other type of reading. It's the honesty of the person on the other side. That's where I may have an issue with. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you would be more trusting of someone that's got 10 years in, you know, has even just a small ELA, has, has shown that has a good reputation in the community to do a distance reading versus someone who's got, you know, three years in and nobody and is, is virtually unknown. I feel like that's a flip of a coin because there's some elders that aren't as trustworthy anymore. Yeah. And the same with newcomers. I, I think it's... It's all how you've been taught and your actual demeanor as a person and as a religious person at that. Yeah, I definitely think the person doing the reading is more of a factor than whether the reading is in person or not. I think that's the biggest factor is, is the person doing the reading. Which is what Desiree said in chat. All right. Well, we've been going on that for about 40 minutes. Uh <laughs> If I could introduce a new topic here that came up a couple of times in Discord in the last month, but related to readings. People said, well, if it's taken so long to do one of the prescriptions that comes up, should you do it? All right, so in a reading, you come at Bire or Osobo, and then you've got these things that you should do. They could be simple, they could be complex, but the idea of doing them is that it ensures the Ire or it avoids the Osobo. So if you get read, and then nine months later, you still haven't done it. What's the worst that could happen? You didn't get the Ire, or you did get the Osobo, right? And I would think by nine months that one of those would have happened. So it's always best to do things right away. But if not, you know, within a week, within a week and a half. Um, Logune De, that must be a priest. I don't know who it is, but it's got to be, some, uh, there's no Alea with that name. Um, so yeah, that's just the thing. I mean, if it's been nine months and you're putting off getting your next reading just because you haven't done the thing for the last one, then just forget it. I don't know what other people think. Do it right away. That's the best. But other than that. See, so I, 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 I'll jump in and say I agree. Do it right away. Um, I've always had that opinion. Do it as soon as you can. I always tried to jump on whatever I could same day if I got the reading early enough. Otherwise, next few days after that but I was always I was always taught when you get a reading and you get something prescribed it's still a debt that you owe you know what I mean so even if something's come to pass or even if so much time has passed you should still get it done because uh, it's a debt that you I think you it know? depends so, what it is right if it's something easy then then um definitely do it. But if it's something that you've put off doing because, well, there's a difference between putting off and not being able to do. Right. right. I was going to say that too, right? Yeah, right? yeah. So if you just you... haven't done it because you're forgetful or you're procrastinating, etc., then freaking do it. But if you put putting it off because it's so hard to get a hold of something, then that's kind of different. So I think that that kind of leads to a little bit to context. So for example, we're putting our, our house goes on market Monday um Orula and Alec will have us have assured us that it will sell quickly and for the price that we're asking for but Alec, Alec asked us to do a vote to ensure this so this was probably two weeks ago that we that that that, that came out in in a reading and I have yet to do the abode because the house hasn't hit the market yet and I want to make sure that the abode is timed for when the house goes to the market and Alec doesn't seem to have an issue with that so you know, even though I was told a few weeks ago to do this and I should have, you know, oh, it's a bow, do it right away. It seemed to be more effective to have waited. Sure. So I, I think to some extent that that also calls, you know, context. Yeah. Nine months later, I, I'm not doing that a bow because you didn't get the ira and right. you're not going to get the ira or you've already suffered the osobo and there's nothing to do. <laughs> 
for yeah. it, you know. But, you know, if you have the reading and two weeks later, we're like, oh, crap, I was supposed to be to do that at bowl. Check again and see if you can if 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 the abo should still be done because it may be that 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 ire or that asobo was was you know you know already come to pass and I don't know that right, abo was right. really a debt that you owe it's so it's done to ensure that you that 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 either you don't suffer or that you or that you benefit and in not doing the abo you've just lost out on whichever one of those you were supposed to get. So I don't know that it's really a debt. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> for me, it's always some, you know, something that's marked on you. I think um, it depends how OCD you are. If you're higher OCD, you're going to want to complete everything, and it's going to bug you a lot more to let something go. Uh, I like not I being know serious. Necessarily that it's OCD either, though, right? You know, and that might just be. <clears throat> I think that could also just be a difference as far as the way things are done in, in uh, you know, Ifa house versus like a Lukumi house. Because I, I can't speak from an Ifa perspective. I, I Not something that I do, but like everything that I've learned has always been more on the Lukumi side. Like I said, for my for me, I was always taught that, you know, you, you get something marked on you. You know, you know you're something that you shouldn't do. Otherwise, the other side of that coin is like what you both mentioned too, where it's like if something comes up later, you can always ask if it's still relevant anymore, mm -hmm. if they're still even looking for it, because that can negate the whole thing right there or solve that problem. But not that it's something that should be forgotten, which is to also say that that's why getting a reading isn't something that should be taken lightly, you know, because uh, at the same time, you don't want to start collecting these prescriptions, so to speak, right? Yeah, for sure. Right. Um and I was thinking of reading myself here because for myself, if I don't do it right away, I start procrastinating. So I need to do it right away. But here's the thing. If you get read, I, if I read someone and say, here's what you need to do, I do not follow up with them. They follow up with me. That goes the same thing that I was saying before. So if it says, you know, bring flowers to Oshun and you don't go to Publix and buy flowers and bring them back, then you right? I'm not going to call you a week later and be like, hey, you're going to bring those. Like, that's not my job. So oh, that's another sure. place where the person getting read has got to be like proactive and not feel timid and saying, can I come by and drop these off it, it for your ocean, right? So so keep that in mind with, for other people when they get read that it's going to be on you to keep track of that stuff. I would say it's different if it's a god child. But really Probably, yeah. Yeah, you know, just like a leader. Usually, you you're in closer communication with God children anyway, right? Yeah. My wife thinks that I baby my God children because I do reach out to them and be like, "Hey, you know, your day broke three weeks ago. You ever come by to get it get it replaced? What's going on?" <laughs> or I don't, I'll, I don't think that I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, traditional something that you do, but then again, is that a tradition that needs to? Continue, or can it be that you know? Can you sit there and have that better relationship with your grandchildren? I don't think that's a problem. You know, it's a Desiree's question though about what was the point of getting the reading if you're not gonna you're not gonna do something right away. I mean, you came to the reading to try to solve the problem. If you have no motivation. To, to solve the problem afterwards or if you think you can kind of just keep putting it off i mean yeah you just you just wasted that reading so right. what was the point you know and and all of that so why did you come if you're, you're not going to do you know what you should do in order to to, to keep the re or ward off the sobo um that's on you you just gave me your money for an hour of my time or, or whatever. So thank you. Appreciate it for enriching me. A lot of people are just addicted to getting readings. They just want to hear stuff. And they, that's all. They don't want to do any, they don't, it doesn't matter. It's kind of strange. Luckily, I don't have very many, but I've come across a couple. And usually it involves an ex. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, they want to know about uh, you know, a reading that they got from another priest at a different oh, God, yeah. dip, That's a no, 
not well yeah. so that's well, so that's the thing right I, I i like what you guys had mentioned earlier where it's like yeah you're not going to sit there and comment on another person's reading unless you're here i mean i'm sure if you heard something just blatantly outrageous it's a whole other story but you're not going to sit there and be like yeah let me see what they wrote down for you um and that's just a matter of respect right like that's why if you want a reading i'll give you a reading i don't know what the other person told you i don't need to know what they told you let's see what comes out now you know All right, Crab, what's next? What's next? Well, did we did we talk about taboos? Did we talk about readings in context? I think All taboos right, here we go. Here, here's the, the taboos. This comes from Carlos. No Santero can eat pumpkin. I've also heard this for when you get your mano de orula, that not to eat pumpkin. So does that apply to everybody? No. Yeah, I don't never, think so either. I've never heard of that being an everybody taboo. In, in the context that I, I got it in, was anybody crowned would not eat on uh -huh. that period. And then the other part of it in the chat was, well, what kind of squash? Is it a specific squash or it is all squashes, etc.? Well, so I thought it was a specific path of a tomb, and I was always under the impression it was the green acorn squash. But a lot of people think it's like the Halloween pumpkin, mm -hmm. the big orange one. Right. But now, in my understanding, traditionally, that's not the case. For me, if this were to come up in Utah, it's imp this, this is when it would be important to ask these questions. Right. But as far as something that applies to every Santero, I've not heard that. I mean, I have that prescription from Santo and that I can't eat pumpkin. And since pumpkin was the word used, then uh -huh. that's what I that that that's that's what I go by. I'm not a big fan of squash in general. Yeah, me so neither. The only, uh, yeah, the only thing I'm really missing out on is uh, you know, pumpkin pie, but that's fine. I don't I even like pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin bread though. My mom makes pumpkin bread. I love it. See, I can well, I, I, thing, right? like, I can do sweet potato pie all day long and be fine. Huh. You should be following what, you know, your house told you. Oh, if definitely. Yep. Obviously, yep. regardless. So if they said pumpkin and that's the context they're using, then, you know. They used the word pumpkin in my, you know, in, in my Ita de Santo. If they said cabeza or... or, or calabaza. Uh, calabaza. Sorry, if they said calabaza, I probably would, would have, you know, kept eating pumpkin pie. Because those are two very different things. Right, so I can't eat egg, but I'll eat the hell out of bread and cake and shit. So it's not an egg. It's bread. That's I can't cake. eat eggs. I can't eat eggs either. I, I can't eggs and, and, and things that are made with a custard. So like ice cream, flan, that sort no, of stuff. No, fuck that. It's egg. It doesn't say custard. It doesn't say ice cream. Oh, it says egg. But mine, mine says well, well. custard, you use eggs to make custard. So it's an ingredient. But then you could just go forever. You could have this, you know, yeah. regression yeah. ad nauseum. So... so I just take now, on, that, on that front, this is where a, a taboo kind of kind of cuts the other direction. In that, you know, I've asked Arula, or Arula, I, well, I've gone to Arula to ask about the law a couple of times about, dude, I'm having some really nasty health issues, and I feel like protein is the, the issue that's up here. And I'm like, you know, I need I needed I waited to get some quick and easy protein. You know, is it okay if I have some hard boiled eggs? And it came out that. Yes, you can have some hard-boiled eggs, but you have to give me as many as you eat. So he's 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 lifted the taboo when it's been a thing that's that's been critical to, to to keeping my health, and that may be the reason for the taboo is, dude, we don't know. You'll do this when it's something that's critical for you, but then other than that, you can't touch it, and you have to ask me every time. So you know, it was just one of those things. Let's see, who's you, the saying thought it was uh, some people can't cut into a pumpkin? Yeah. You can't cut I into a pumpkin. You can't eat coconut because that's what we use to talk to the Santos. You can't live in a high rise if you're crowned because the Santos don't live in the air. Um, you can't live anywhere but the first floor because. Oh, if you're scratched, you can't live anywhere but the first floor because your prenda needs to be on firm ground, right? So these would be impossible if you lived in New York City. 
Well, and first of all, not everybody scratched has a friend up. I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah, no, you don't. You don't get a. You don't have to get a friend when you get scratched. <clears throat> Most people don't. <clears throat> right. So that that wouldn't uh, apply, and you know, if again, like you said, if you live in New York City, I have to get a basement apartment now in order to be able to. to right, right. You know, I mean, it's just not practical in in in, in the way that those things work. You know. Oh. So every sign is going to have taboos. And if we expected every taboo and every sign to apply to every person, we wouldn't be able to get anything done. Yep. So how do we decide which taboos apply to everybody and which only to apply to those people with that sign? But I don't think that there's any taboo that applies to everybody. I think it can only be a taboo that applies to you if it comes out in that. You know, other than something that comes in a, a, a okay, so something comes in a soul, but in, in an assault, they don't eat yams. That's going to be for a week. You can't eat yams for a week if that's something that they, that gets marked in that. But that's that's not a, a a taboo that applies to everybody. That applies to one person for a limited amount of time. It's not in any da, and you know, to your point, there are tons of taboos in every sign and someone who pulls that sign doesn't get hit with every one of those taboos. Right, right, yeah. You know, again, that comes in any in, in da. So I don't I don't know where this whole that this whole thing comes from. It just it doesn't make sense to me that that all the taboos in the religion are somehow universal. You know, I, I just I just don't under, I don't understand that. Um contextually so there are things that were taken from me when i did santo one of those was uh was was carnero and uh what else and pollo now oh man uh, and what now here's huh and what did you say pollo? Pollo. oh with a p with a P. Yeah, no, oh, the oh. other one wasn't taken from me. Trust me, I'm still married. <laughs> <laughs> and <polio. laughs> um, uh, Let's so, emphasize those first letters. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and it was clarified in the time uh, of that, that no, you can still have a chicken sandwich. This is simply not something that you can consume during a ceremony. So if you come to the table at a, at a Santo or something like that, and these are two of the two of the meal options. No, nope, you're eating the chivo, or mm, right, right. or or whatever else. You're eating something else. So if I want to go out into the world and I want to have a gyro, and that's because that's lamb, that's carnero, I can. But it's not because it, it, it's only not in, the, the context only in a of ceremonial it. function. Yeah, exactly. And oh. that's that's where a lot of those those taboos really applies in those situations. You know, I mean, a rule in the Orishas are not going to take something from you that that is there for your sustenance. Imagine if you'd had goat taken from you and yet you lived in Africa, which is right. one of their, you know, like one of their, their main sources of protein. It's like, or or yam, you know, you can't have yam. Wait, what? You know, that that's what we, that, that that's, that's the, the basis of our diet. So they're not going to take it from you in your everyday life. They're going to take it from you in certain ceremony, certain situations. And Garnero being one of Yamaya's favorite foods and me being with the Yamaya, it makes sense that I'm not going to eat what is sacred to her because it, it belongs to her. It doesn't belong to me, not in these situations. So picking up on See, chat, I, um, I don't think in a Sode I ever told somebody you, can, you can't you can eat or you can't do this. Um, I do use the word avoid. For me personally, all right, so... For those who don't know, when you're when you do Ifa, you get three signs. Um, and then, you know, whatever comes before in Santo can inform that as well. Um, but after the first day, right, I was told, yeah, you know, you should you should avoid eggs. Right. But after that second sign, I was I was told you cannot eat another egg in the rest of your life because both those signs talk about death coming. Um for the person that ate an egg. So, you know, you, you also, that's why more than one Santo speaks when you crown. Those those are going to talk alone as well as together. So 
usually it means avoid, but can also mean just give it up completely. So no, it's my a conversation. Question. Well, and when so do you? I'm sorry. Who's talking? I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go. Well, when do you differentiate whether it is a only not eaten in religious uh, practices or on your day to day? Because in some Itas, you'll see that says that you can't eat none of Ochum's foods. So is that on your day to day or is that only when religious practices happen? Well, okay, does that come in an Asoda or does that come in, a, in, in an Ita? In an Ita. Oh, if it comes in an Ita and it says that you you can't eat any of Ochum's foods, um, I would certainly. I probably want some clarification about that. Are we talking again day to day or are we talking, um, you know, ceremonially? Because it may be that that it's, it's ceremonially for similar reasons why, I, you know, me and, me and Garnero, um, or it may be day to day for like with me and me and X. Um, so, I, I think that that's where context is is extremely important here. It needs to be clarified. What are we talking about? If it's day to day, then it may be that at some point in time in the future, Ochoon's going to come to you when you're having a big problem and be like, those foods I told you you can't eat, you're going to now make me a huge ass feast with those things. You're going to serve it to me. And these are for me and for me alone. And I'm going to take care of whatever this problem is for you. And that may be the, the basis for the taboo. But context in taboos is extremely important. Which is where I didn't understand the initial part where no certero can eat pumpkin, because when you go back and read the Padahis, that's where Olofin gave all the uh, uh, the prosperity to. Right. So then I, that, that would make you think you would want to crack open every pumpkin. <laughs> well, and so, like, my father didn't always taught me that in Ita, <clears throat> right, when you frown the like you said the things that they the taboos that it's something you should avoid but you shouldn't eat that's the way he always told me said so don't eat it if you can help it you know you should his exact words is you should respect it, right for the simple fact that you don't eat what can save that all these taboos are taboos for a reason either to save your life or because they can save your life and so ignoring the taboo diminishes the effect that it's supposed to mitigate. And sometimes it's unavoidable. You know, I mean, do you do you eat some pumpkin um, when you're at your relative's house because you've got, you know, because doing not doing so would would upset somebody in the family and you would have all this extra strife, or do you do you do it and then kind of later on go to Ochun and sort of apologize for it? I mean, Ochun isn't going to want you to, to, to have a big family uproar over the fact that you've turned down some some soup because it has pumpkin in it, you know? If you can pick the pieces of pumpkin out, great. But if you can't because it's all been blended together or whatever like that, okay, fine. You know, but, you know, that's kind of not the same as going to a restaurant and ordering soup with, with, with pumpkin in it. You know, you can... You know, I, I think that if if you had to violate the taboo be, because it, it maintains peace within your family, especially you have a judgmental wing of the family about the religion that you're involved in, that you would probably be okay violating that. But you would also then want to follow up with Ochun later to make sure she understood and to do anything to appease her if you needed to. So... Um... It's after nine o'clock, so it's my bedtime on the East Coast. But I hear Anthony talking in my ear, Ifaso Bone, um, because I, I imagine he's going to say, regardless of what the taboo is, you respect it. Um, and there is no fudging taboos. And he can correct, obviously, after we post this. Uh, but he would probably then recite a verse where somebody had something horrible to them happen because they kept... Uh, violating their taboo um but i'm gonna i'm gonna stay signed in that way i can keep the whole thing recorded um crab but before it, i don't know if it'll allow you to kick me out since i'm not the admin but um you can make me the last person to kick out but i'm gonna just close it okay. basically
All right, keep going. I'm okay. glad we've, we've got 15 people, so that's awesome. I guess we're going to now have to do this monthly. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Turn your camera off, man. We don't want to see you walking through the room naked. Yeah. All right. I don't know if I can. Yeah. But, uh, like, I've got a similar <clears throat> taboo as you with the Carnero and all that. So, like, I haven't had a hero in, oh, my God, 10 years, almost 11 years. But that's more of, I've had the opportunity. I know I could, but there's other options where I go. So I choose not to. I've been able to choose not to. Because like you were saying earlier, sometimes, no, I'm kidding, my father didn't know what I always say. If you're you're starving and there's food in front of you and you got nothing, you know, nothing else to eat, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? You're going to starve and not eat or you're going to eat your food. Like it is right. what it is. Right. And, and you know. Not abusing it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't want to be, you don't want to be making the excuse. Well, if I if I don't eat the soup every, you know, every day, my aunt's gonna get pissed about whatever or something like that. But it's like, you know, you you want to you want to maintain that that taboo as, as much as possible. I think that given some situations, you might have if you have to violate it, you have to you have to violate it. I mean, there's again, there's always context around why these things happen, and you can you can. You know, you can kind of go and check on the context of it. And if you find out that, no, you shouldn't have done it and Ochoon is really pissed, well, you have the opportunity to appease her. And then you know that going forward, no matter what, don't mess with it. Don't mess with the taboo. Yeah. You know, because it may be that down the road, they, that's the only thing that's going to save your life. And it's going to be Ochoon Sita that's going to bring that to you. You, you know, you, you certainly don't know those things. But but I, I think that... that it, if push comes to shove, you you sometimes just you just have to. Right? It's not it's not preferred, and it should be an extremely rare situation. But at least you know to something that that's kind of my take on it. I, I I just I think that like with all things where context is important, the context of why you violated the taboo is important as well. So I guess I bring this. I feel like the priest could also. You know, dabble more deeply into into those when those itas are given. Uh, whether is it is it only at religious functions or is it in your day to day? It, it, I, I don't think it's just a matter of interpretation. I also believe it's a matter of how it's of how it's written and how it's stated. Right, and 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 stuff like that. And that's that's where it became. You know, like when it came to the the to to, to pollo with the p and carnero. Um, you know, yeah, it was. It had to be kind of clarified. They're like, well, hold on a second. You know, are we talking about this is a, 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 a definite? You know, no, no matter what, or is this? Oh no, it's just, it's just a, it's just a ceremony. Okay, great, that's fine. That because that gives you more understanding about how you need to be conducting yourself down the road. You know, if it comes in on a solo day, hey, you know what? For a week, probably shouldn't eat toasted foods or something like that. You're, you know, but after a week, you're, you're fine. You know, those, and you could ask, why are those being taken away? Are those being taken away because I need to make a change to my diet? And yeah, you, th that's why those things are being taken away. So, my, my issue is when you sit here and say, well, you can't eat none of a tooth food and you can't eat none of a babalas food. And then when you start looking down, it's like you're, you're knocking a, a very huge amount of food for so, a lifespan. So, you're, you're leaving me with rice. That's what you're leaving me with. I gotcha. Sure. Correct. And then, you know, you got to sit there and go, okay, so is this only in, you know, when you're, you're doing a santo or you're doing any other type of religious function, or is this on your day to day? And the problem is that nobody sits there and explains it to, to, the, to, to anybody in general. Yeah, well, I mean, so I, I don't think, I've never heard of you losing all the food of this or each on that or each on the other. Uh, you know, maybe respecting the food from like your mother and your father, <clears throat> but not that you'd lose all of that taboos. Like I said, it would be Mark and Ita. Uh, this is my understanding, the way that it worked for me, the way it's done in my house. Uh, so I don't know, you know, but I've never heard, like we were talking about those over generalizations of the taboos, like the pumpkin, you know, no Santero can do this, or no Santero can do that. Even with the coconut thing that Bob mentioned, you know, I'd heard. 
that you shouldn't eat coconut on days that you're going to do ceremony because it's the oracle we speak with you know what i mean but not that you couldn't eat it at all but i've heard both sides of that you know throughout the years so i i don't know you know you see my, my argument for that coconut one when i heard it was well that's they stated that's what you use to communicate and i said uh so should we stop eating chicken and every other animal because that's what we give as an offering because where, where does this lengthiness end Well, I think that, I don't know, the, the coconut I one, I can understand. I can understand why there's, there's a, a taboo yeah. against eating coconut because, you know, Obi is an Orisha and all of that. But at the same time, until you actually employ Obi in in the the, the ceremonial aspect, it's just a coconut. It, you know, I mean, that's that that's the reality of that there. So I don't I don't understand the the... the Hey, you know what? I, I I got up on a Monday morning and I don't have any ceremonies planned that I'm attending, and I'm not going to be giving cocoa to anything today. You know, so I'm going to go have you know uh, some coconut ice cream for whatever and and stuff. Oh, but I can't do that because I can't eat coconut because you know I, I I'm a, I'm crowned. That again, that doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. That that's. That's lazy on the part, I think, of the people that that gave that that taboo, and it, it lacks the, the the proper context of when, where, and why it's important to respect the orisha. Right, yeah, and the, the latest one I heard is um, can't eat crab because it walks sideways, so your life will go sideways if you continue eating crab. And I just sat there and said, "Excuse me." <laughs> so I've heard that you don't eat crab. Not because crab walks sideways, but because crab lacks an odi. It doesn't have a distinct head. I heard that, that um, but I heard better. that it's odu specific. Um, and other than being odu specific, I've heard children of Yamaya shouldn't eat crab because that's one of those, one of her kids, thing. one of her. See, it wasn't mentioned when I crowned about crab. It was, I think it was, it might have been mentioned when I got scratched for whatever reason. See, but in the context I heard it, it was in a general context. There's no crowned child. And I, I just sat there and, uh, like I said, I'm one of the newer ones here. So, so. I said, I've never heard the, I never heard the reasoning about it walking sideways. Like I said, by all means, I, I don't know at all. Uh, by any script. Uh, my my Ocha knowledge is a lot more limited than than follow side. But uh, I've never heard that that thing before that they walk sideways to uh, sort of make your life go sideways. Yeah, I mean for me it was always about crab not having an ori, a distinct a distinct and separate head, and therefore it, it didn't have a direction in in life. I know crab, uh, like crab and lobster were taken from me. That was from an odu that I got, though. Um, not just because. Which really sucks because your boy loves crab rangoon. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> but isn't crab rangoon really just cream cheese and that fake crab leg stuff inside a wonton? Well, some places have fake, some places don't. <laughs> All right, all right, I got you. I got you. Makes, uh, makes all the difference, you know. But now it's one of those things where same thing. Like for almost eleven years, I haven't had real crab. So should we expand this context on taboos in context into the, the greater arena of readings in context? And, sure. and kind of what comes out, or at least, I guess. I mean, I guess I don't know from. These kind of, kind of, for me, go hand in hand. You know, is it a, is it an itas or is it a life odu like from your mono, or is it simply an osode? Uh, no, it's not you know, if it's an osode, you need to be concerned about it for about a week. If it's, uh, you know, a life odu, 
Well, that's for life, but not everything in uh, an Odu that's that's for life has to be done right away. Um, right. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure told, that. I told you, you have to do it right away. Right. I mean, you know, what is it that, that this is critical before you leave the throne and get this done? There are those or, you know, within the first six, eight months. Yeah, those things as they're marked. But that goes back to the context of it. It's as they're marked. I mean, we bought th those of us that have done Santo here. We were all given a list of these are the Odishas that you need to receive over your lifetime. This means you need to run out and find 50 grand to receive all of them in the next six months. This is, and it wouldn't necessarily even be appropriate to do so um, over your, you know, right away. These need to, you know, this may be something that you should only receive when you hit a certain age or you have a certain health issue or something like that, but it's something that you, you need to kind of keep in mind um, for for your you know your your the rest of your life for your journey on this um i'm, I'm supposed to receive odudua and orisha oko which makes complete sense because i'm a lao and those are two that are very important in in the world of of Ifa. um i don't know that i need to receive them like right now i don't know you know especially odudua i don't know that i need odudua just yet that would be the next one that I wanted to get. But it was marked in a conversation about a year and a half ago, summer 2022. So, yeah. So in summer 2022 that I needed to receive a room and that that was something that needed to happen like right away. So, yeah, I that was a huge commitment. And, and I went and I did it. But it was something that came down in, in consultation with you know, with, with my padrino, that this is something that you need to have ASAP. And there are some very good reasons for it. We need to get it done as soon as we can. And so we did. But, you know, the, the, the context of, of when, and re when to receive those things was very much driven by the Odus themselves and the readings themselves and even the type of the readings and what was marked. Yeah, because I think in my Ita, there are about five, five Odishas I have to receive over time, five or six. And there was only one that I was told, like, hey, by your three-month Evo, you know what I mean? Like, you need this. Right. That's what I did. I did my three-month Evo, and I received three you know? But the rest I still have on, like, my to-do list. But the way my father didn't always told me was it, it's something where you don't have to run to get it done because those at the same time are huge of both, right? Which is why they're marked. Right. So something comes up in your life that's crazy, either a health issue or some sort of major thing you're trying to accomplish, you know what I mean? That could very well be the Ebola that gets you that outcome, you know? But it's like if you run to receive all of that right away because, oh, I marked it, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just knock it out now. You've deprived yourself of that Ebola, yeah. Exactly, deprive yourself of that Ebola to get it done yeah, in that point in time. And then what are you going to receive after? The whole pantheon? You know, that's that's the question of after a lot of people that go crazy and try to receive each and every one right after doing something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot that's... of people don't think about it. You got you to gotta have the space for all of them for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and now you've got to, the you know the responsibility the commitment to the, to having the icon in your in your house and the caring for them on the the proper days in the proper ways the uh, again any new any new taboos or or whatnot that have come down in receiving them and all of that you know um, you know I, I think that the other piece that's important about the the context of a reading is also what what is in the odu i mean one of the things that just absolutely drives me nuts are is getting a reading or and the person that that is that is divining isn't really divining they're they're not considering the context of what's going on as soon as they they have the odu they they just read the entire Odu to the person as if everything in that Odu applies 
to that person and that situation as they, they, they are sitting there in front of them now with the problem that they have right now. And, and that's just not true. Um, I know a guy who left the house because he's gay. And on more than one occasion, the Odu mentioned that, hey, be careful you don't get some girl pregnant. He's gay. He's not, he, this, there's just no way this is ever gonna, this is ever gonna happen. I mean, he's never gonna find himself in any situation where he's going to be engaged in any kind of activity that would get anybody pregnant. And there's no way he's ever gonna be approached to be a donor. But the, the person that was doing the reading wouldn't, wouldn't do their job and actually what in the Odu is the piece that is, that is appropriate to the context of this person and their problem right now. You know, and, and that's, that, that to me, that, that just pisses me off because that's lazy. That's throwing everything in the Odu at the wall to see what sticks and then trying to figure out how, how you, you fix the problem, if it is a problem, or, or how do you keep the re, you know, if, if there isn't an issue. It's not, it's not doing your job as the diviner. Um, I always read through the Odu first in, in nearly its entirety before I ever open my mouth and and start talking to the person that's sitting on the other the other side of the the desk you know because i want to you know is there stuff in there that's specifically directed at me the the wow wow and if it's a dude sitting in front of me i'm not going to be reading them about stuff that 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 a woman shouldn't be doing it's a dude so again that that that's that that context is in is extremely important and i i don't i guess i don't understand why we've gotten lazy to the point of of why we don't do that anymore or people aren't doing that anymore I, I just don't understand i think that's one of those things that's very injurious to the religion and just empowers the the, the charlatans that are out there even more or and then ends up giving all of us a bad name i mean i don't i don't know how much experience lots of the you and and, and Pookie have with doing Osore for people. I know you've got a lot of experience, lots of with, with the, the Palo side of things. So when doing a reading with the Chamalangos, how do you approach the context of that? Well, so uh, there's a lot that kind of goes into that, right? Because how they fall, the sign that they fall, the formation that they fall. Sure. You know, you know what the Winto has to say. Um, a lot of different factors with that. And there's that's not the only like form of divination with them too. Uh, you know, there's a like a clamshell style divination. There's one with like the tiger, tiger eye shells. Uh, that style of divination. <clears throat> a couple different ways, and it gets pretty pretty intricate. And same thing to your point. You know, when you're learning how to do that, there's there's signs that come out where you know, there's there's messages that are relevant if it's a man that aren't relevant if it's a woman, vice versa. Uh, messages, you know, that are dependent on if the sign comes positive or negative, you know, which is based on different factors too. Uh, but you know what I mean? But it, it's, it's, it's more than just, okay, this is everything for this, so I'm just going to tell you everything. Like you said, kind of throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks it's more you got to know what you're doing you have to have that experience especially on the side when you're dealing with the what feels like there there's more intricacy in regards to to doing that than just saying okay this is the information you know um, and knowing the questions to ask and how to ask them has always been the biggest thing that like my godfather always taught me because you know, a lot of people go, they'll, they'll throw, same thing with like throwing Obi, right? You know, people go up and stand in front of whatever they've got and be like, hey, you know, can I do this? You know, but it, they don't go and they don't explain what they're trying to do. They don't explain why they want to do it. They don't, you know, so it's like, we were talking about how people always make a big deal of like love issues, right? It's always love issues that seem to 
get people running to do, you know, extreme things. Like, oh, hey, you know, uh, is this person good for me? Right? Well, what's good for them? You know, what is good that. for them? Huh? Yeah, you know? there's a, that reminds me of that Pataki. Um, was it Pataki? No, it's not a Pataki. It's a story. I think it was in one of Raul Canisarius' books. It might have been his one on Olegua, where um, an acquaintance of his went to Olegua and said, Olegua. I want my mom to get better. As his mom, I guess, was really, really ill. But he didn't really define what what better was for, you know, what what he was talking about. And the guy finds out after he comes back from a, a, a short trip that his mom had passed. And this wasn't too long after he'd gone and talked to Alegua. So Alegua's definition of his mom being better was for her to pass away and not be suffering from her illness anymore. So you need to define. The, the context, and I, think, I guess that's a good point for the for the Aleos here, is that part of the context of a reading is what you're bringing to that reading and and how specific you are in in what you're asking of the reading. You know, um, I always give my clients, you know, a couple of minutes or so before we start this with, with I, I hand them the, the equile and, and the, the Evo and, and the, the dollar coin that's always a part of my, my readings. I give them that and I say, take these and pray very quietly, you know, in your, you know, to yourself or whatever like that, um, about what it is that you you are here um, to ask a ruler about. It's like, I don't need to know. So you don't have to pray out loud. You need to give him the context so that he understands what it is that, that you're wanting to do. And for those people that, that do that and, and are very clear with the ruler, we get a really good reading. But for those that are like, well, I just want to see if everything's okay with me. Um, okay, you're going to start you're going to start getting a really, a, probably a bunch of conflicting answers and stuff because you haven't really given us a solid context. What is okay? Are you suffering from something specific? So when you go for a reading, being specific about what you're there for is extremely important, you know, and, and don't make it, I'm here to check these 27 things. What is the most important thing on that list to, to, to find out about? And what is the context of that question? Why is that particular thing um, bringing you to the table? And, and wanting you to get this checked out. What is that thing, that, what is it, it, it causing you issues on? If anything else on your list is important, trust me, the reading won't close until all of that's been addressed. I've, I, I've, I've had people come to me you know, last, the other day when I was reading my wife, um, the reading wouldn't close until you know, one of the issues that she's having with, with one of her kids was brought up and discussed. Um, I had a client a few days before that that reading wouldn't close because he wouldn't ask Aruba about his plans to, you know, to to improve his, his job situation, which was something that was, was a problem, but it wasn't what he was there to talk about specifically. It wasn't what he was there to talk about at all. But Aruba was like, no, dude, you have this idea and you need to check with me to make sure it's good for you to do. And then until that was brought up and addressed. So part of the context of the reading is what you, the Aleos, or anybody getting read, whether I'm, you know, when, when I'm getting read myself, when, you know, what we bring to a rule and how clear we are with him about why we're there and how that's affecting our lives. I mean, a rule knows without you really telling him, but you still need to tell him. You still need to be clear about that because otherwise he's just going to lead you around in circles and start giving you, I like to call them fuck you answers. Um, he's going to give you contradictory information because he's trying to get you to, to that point where you're like, okay, here's really what's happening. And here's why this is an issue. And that's it for my diatribe. Who's got one else? I know you do lots of, come on. I know you have a diatribe. <laughs> well, so that was just, a lot there, right? Um, yeah. Sorry, and someone called me, so then I got distracted for a second. Uh, sending him a message back. The biggest thing for me 
trying to gather my thoughts. Because to your point, when you were saying, like, at that point, be specific. So, like, one thing I learned throughout, you know, the time that I've been kind of doing this is really to kind of cater my app, to, to be more general but beneficial to what I'm looking for. Right? So, like, it's something my father didn't always used to say, and, and it always stuck with me. You know, whenever he would say something or he'd talk, he'd ask, he would always ask for the same thing, right? Dame paz, tranquilidad, salud y desenvolvimiento. Like, that's it. He's like, because if I got that, I'm good, right? Like, I'm good. Right. My life will be good. So how, whatever whatever that looks like, whatever they envision it as, so that's something that I kind of just catered towards when I'm doing a reading too, right? Like, hey, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. Give me whatever messages I need to have it, right? Uh, and I found that for me, at least it's always worked out nicely, right? Because if I have problems in my life, you know, it usually helps address those problems. If I'm slacking on something, I usually get the wake up call I need. If I, you know, whatever the case may be. And I feel like a lot of people get wrapped up, you know, kind of like what we're talking about and, and wanting to ask about certain things, right? So it's like, you know, I knew, I knew someone before that it was like, man, I, I got beef with this person. And I know for a fact that, you know, they're they're the cause of all my trouble. Come to find out the person had nothing to do with anything. You know what I mean? But they were just so wrapped up in it and then weren't understanding why everything was no, 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 no. You know, even on their end when they tried to do something. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, no, I must be doing this wrong. You know, it's got to be this person. I'm like, no, you just, you're not asking the right question, right? Like, and you're getting the answer, but you don't like the answer. Right. right. So that's where a lot of training, you know, training comes into play. Um, unfortunately, learning's hard, right? Because the accessibility of the elders that one are willing to teach you, you know, that are, are available, that are consistent, you know, it's it's hard for anybody. Um, the the difference in, in houses too, I mean, just in this chat alone, how many different views did we have on on the same subject you know what I mean? it four different people talking and four different kind of experiences for the most part on, on things and there's so many more so it, it makes it harder too which is why i like you know the, the online access because it's getting more information out there but it's a double-edged sword where it's helping to kind of muddy the waters too you know with with so much information getting out there and people doing their own thing but you know that's where being able to talk to Odu or Pataki or anything historical that, that can be referenced, you know, uh, really helps the narrative be correct. And ultimately, I think that that's going to be beneficial for, for everybody that's, that's here, everybody that comes to the Discord. I mean, a lot of us have the same story, right? We just want to learn and either got burned or trust issues because of things that happened or things that put bad taste in our mouth and unfortunately like you'll find that everywhere but if you can't trust yourself who can you trust is something my godfather always taught me and that's something that I think every single one of us needs to remember uh, yeah. forward because we do you know we have our cuadro spiritual we got our ego and we got whatever you believe in right your muerto your solo so I guess. I mean, I don't really have much else on that. I mean, I don't know, Carlos. Do you have anything on the the the, the context side of readings and from your experience? Have you done also days for for any clients, or even just at the direction of your your godparents for for people in in their life? Well, uh, what I can say is, that there's a lot of people that are afraid to get a reading because they're afraid to hear the bad stuff. But you can't cure yourself from the bad stuff if you don't hear it. I also think that in a reading, whoever is giving the reading should also tell you the good parts of the sign and not so hyper-focus on all the bad things because there is there are good parts of uh, every sign. It's not just a tragic, a, a tragic ending to every sign. And I think that's a major issue that a lot of Aleos have to deal with. And even myself, when I was coming in the religion, you would come and you would get a reading. Even yeah. you know, when you... And it's like, oh, these are the 40,000 things that are going to go wrong. And then you're like, is there anything right? 
So it's the same concept of having to go to a doctor. And a lot of people won't go to the doctor because they're afraid to hear all the bad. But in in our religion, if you don't hear the bad, you'll never you, you, you'll never really understand what you got to do to get good. Or even the flip side of it, hey, there may not be any bad for you. You've got things going your way. If you want to keep it that way, here's what you need to do. And we all want to keep the good. So, you know, this is what we want to do for you, for you, for you to keep the good. So that's, that's, yeah, that's, I, I think that that's, that's an increasing problem for us. And I don't know where that, <clears throat> that view is bloomed from that. Oh, if I go and get a reading, I'm only going to be told the bad stuff and I'm not going to hear about anything. I don't know if that's just, again, a, a part of, you know, a certain new generation of, of practitioners that have come in that have, use the doom and gloom side to be able to line their pockets or, or what, or if it's just that, uh, you know, again, lazy diviners in that they won't, they won't look at the, the Odu to see what fits context. Cause there can only be in that entire Odu one line that applies to that situation, but it's the best line that apply, you know, to apply that, that person's situation and either keep their ure or, you know, deal with the Asobo. And, and make things better for them. You know, we, I, I, that's just why the context is so important. Yeah, but you'd also inevitably have someone that has a, a consulta that's all ire and then get pissed off the first time something inconveniences them. You know what I mean? Because it's like, I came in all ire. Why is, some, why is something bad happening to me? Well, because like, you don't not keep how it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's not how it works. I think that, that that's, you know, ire is the easiest thing in the world to lose. Ire is fragile. You, you know, it you can you can be ire during the reading and literally as soon as you leave, you sneeze and bang, now you're a solo. You know, that's that's why it's it's important to do the things that you're supposed to do to keep the ire. Um, but ire is fragile. It's it's you know, it's it has to be maintained. You actually have to work harder to keep it a than you do to push off a sobo most of the time. Um, simply because, you know, the, the Pataki has a sobo doing his ebos and showing up to Olofi at the appointed time. And, you know, he got the, the blessings that he will always be kind of ratifica. He's always going to be strong, set in stone sort of a thing. And Ire was still sleeping when, you know, Osoba was over getting the blessing and Ire shows up later and is like, eh, well, I already gave away the blessings. And, you know, Alofi said, so what's going to happen is, is that Osoba is always going to be around. Osoba is always going to get people to pray to come to you. So you're going to be more fleeting, but people are always going to be, you know, making offerings to get to you. So, there you go. So it's just. Another big thing is don't become an extreme fanatic because if you trip on a rock, you can't blame the muerto that pushed you. You know, it's, you just weren't looking down. That, that's yeah, another rock big rock and, oh, it's you. Yeah. It's you, man. man. <laughs> that's all, you know? not, like, yeah, what? Not, not everything that happens is because of Ire or Sobo or somebody's throwing. Nobody's throwing brujeria at you to, to, to cause you to lose your, your shoe. And then you, just, you just forgot where you left them or your car keys or something like that. And not everything is a reason to go running to, you know, to a, a, an elder for a reading. It, you know, you, again, what's the context of it? I was walking along and I was crossing the street and there's a construction zone nearby and there was a big rock in the, the middle of the street from the construction zone and I tripped on that. That's not... Brujeria. That's no. There's a construction zone, and there was a big rock, and you didn't see it, and you tripped on it. Now, if there was no construction zone along, and it's three in the morning, and the rock wasn't there, as soon as you started crossing the street, and then you trip on a rock, uh, okay, maybe that's a reason to go. But again, it's the context of the situation. I don't know, guys. I don't really have much else. Does anybody else? No, not on my side. No, I mean, I don't know if anybody's got questions. Uh, Bob said earlier that uh, you took a good in the chat. questions or 
Yeah, I don't. I, I'm not, I can't unmute. If I reclaim the host, it'll stop his recording, and then I don't want to do that. If people have questions, I want to to capture the. Ah, uh, I got you. So have them type their questions in the in the chat. If anyone's got questions, now's your time. Type them up. We also accept comments on how dope I am. Oh, M. Uh, Sky said that uh, she thought there was a taboo uh, Yamaya oh. where you couldn't have dogs anymore for life. That's a Camino, right? Isn't that a Camino Yamaya? Um, I think that's a Camino of Yamaya. I am Hijo de Yamaya, and I have a dog, and she's, you know, she's my best bud, dude. She's it's she's not awesome. every. It's not every. So the way I was taught was that it's not every path of Yamaya that can't have it. But if you're if your Yamaya is that Camino of Yamaya, then you can't have dogs. Uh, Camino where the story is about how she gets betrayed by dog. So I don't know. If uh, you've heard anything about that crabs on your side, or I haven't, I wasn't. You know, the only time animals ever came into to into my uh, into my life in an impactful way was when I received my bays. They always want to be kept up high so that they aren't disturbed by any animals that I have, like my cat or my dog or something like that. No, but fair enough. In, in terms of having a dog, I was never told that I couldn't. So, take care, Lilith. Good night, love. All right. Good night, guys. All right. Take care, everybody. All right, everyone. Great session. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all. There's something called road stop. Hey everyone, and to all my palitos out there, Salam Alegum, Alegum Salah.